All right, looks like we're live. Let me see who's out there today. What's going on? My man, Dennis. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's today's topic? Dennis, throw out a topic. Since you're on here early, Dennis, what do you guys want to talk about? I have no topic. This is wide open. Anybody wants to jump on, anyone wants to talk to me, jump on. Let's talk. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just getting started. You haven't missed anything yet. It's funny because it's like I always start off slow and then I start getting in like real heated up and passionate later on. So anyone has any questions, definitely jump on the live. Talk. MJ Global. MJ Global. Maria just put in another bid today. By the way, everyone say congrats, Maria. She uh, last week we turned in a proposal for podcasting. This week she did one for some dumpster contract. So I hope everyone out there is bidding. I hope everyone out there is reaching out, talking, making connections, building relationships. Did you see, by the way, the article that? Uh, let me go my Twitter feed. By the way, this is your time. So don't feel like you're coming here just to hear me talk. The government this year looks like they're going to exceed $600 billion in spending, which is a all-time record. So it says here it's going to be historic territory. The government is going to be at a historic all-time spending $600 plus billion this year. Is what they're looking at. Two months left to go. We're just starting August. We've got two full months, ladies and gentlemen, two full months left to go. Right? It's a sprint at this point. Let's go. Look, anyone has any questions? Anyone has anything they want to talk about? Definitely suggest, ask me questions, shoot me a message, jump on, make a request, say hi, just whatever. It's, let's do it. I actually don't have any pre-scripted content. I'm just here talking, letting people know. Um, I will say some couple housekeeping things. I definitely want to put out there, first and foremost. Uh, just let me say a couple things real quick, just because the people on IG, some of you only know me from IG. And you've never actually Googled me to find out what else we got going on. Hello, from California. We have put out a lot of content. Um, right behind me, I actually wrote it on a whiteboard just to kind of like set the pace and tone. I mean, we have right now on YouTube, I just looked at it. I have 336 videos. So we've got 300 plus videos on YouTube. I've got a free course, a free 18 day course that people can take. I have a paid course that people could take. I have a book with a bu which probably 100 plus free sites that you can go to. I have, I mean, look at this stuff. I've got a daily blog, right? Two books out. I do two lives a week. We have the podcast with over 60 plus episodes of successful folks out here. Three Facebook groups. Two Patreon groups. Email list of over 7,000 people. Look, I'm the hardest working person in GovCon. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Like, If you can't get something out of all of this content, out of all this information, we've, we, I mean, we have tens of thousands of hours of content out there for people to consume, to watch, to learn from, to grow. In fact, I, what I'm going to start off since 
I saw a couple questions. Hold on. Let me see real quick. Let me jump on some of these questions. I'm getting trained as a freight broker. How do I combine that with my freight trucks entity? Um, I'm not sure of the specific question, how that relates to contracts. But uh, ask a question related to contracts. Uh, I actually don't do freight brokering. So uh, that's not freight brokering is not my specialty. Getting contracts is. What are some activities for someone who wants to start off as a consultant to do with the last two months left? So with two months left in the marketplace, we talked about, this comes from Shard, 25, good question. If you want to start as a consultant, there's two months left. The What I would do with this two months is I would go back and I would look at projects that were in the pre-solicitation phase probably a month to two months ago, okay? And I would look at projects in a pre-solicitation phase two months ago because if they haven't come out yet, they are the ones that are going to be coming out. And then from there, I would reach out to someone like whoever I was representing as a consultant, I would reach out to that company. Okay, so let's say you have a company already. So then I would take that company, go backwards and look at the pre-solicitation projects. Those are going to be anticipated solicitations. And then I would start talking to contracting folks about those jobs that are coming out now because if they're pre-solicitations you already know they're coming out right before they actually come out so then i would already put i put stuff in the works for doing that um and vice versa so if you didn't have a client then you go back and look at pre-solicitation find out what opportunities there are and then use those opportunities to go out and identify people who can actually match them up with and then i would make those connections there so uh i don't know how to say your name zero zero four What's the best net 30 vendors one should use? I don't understand that question because normally your vendors are the ones that you use for your business. So depending upon your business or industry, that's how you determine your net 30 vendors. So I'm not really sure of what you mean. Maybe you can ask it a little bit better. By the way, Colin, I see you're on here. I actually sent you, and the email bounced back. I actually sent you a preliminary copy of my second book for you to review. But the email bounced back. I don't know what happened. You bought the building on playbook. Congratulations. All right. Someone says, explain how individuals with no contracts or company who are starting out can get a piece of fourth quarter pie through consulting the value they can deliver. So if you have no contracts uh, or no company, that's okay. Uh, and you're just getting started, like I just mentioned before. There, a lot of, what, what, a lot of times what's happening is the and we talk about this in our in our community we talk about this over on our other channel is that the people who and and this is very important to to understand when you're doing consulting and the folks out there who are actually doing the actual business right so the construction company the IT company the janitorial company a lot of times folks don't have time to do their actual business development and there's nothing better than a great business development person. And so again, with no company and no con- an actual contract, then you could actually be the business development arm for someone. And so if you go back to the recent video where we talked about sources, sites, uh, pre-solicitations, DOD awards on YouTube that I literally just posted like in the last week, if you go back and watch those videos, you will find out how to discover opportunities that are not widely available, not uh, distributed everywhere out there. By the way, another great place to go is on our blog. We're starting to do daily postings on our blog. So we're doing daily postings of all of the major contract opportunities. That's a great way. So for example, let me look, I'm gonna go on our blog right now. So I'm actually gonna take this off. Let me figure this thing out, okay. Okay, so on our blog here, Archer Weston was awarded contract for construction of Hurricane Florence recovery package for bridges. So Archer Weston got this big package, $117 million, right? What I would do is, this just came out. This literally was just like posted. What I would do is, I would look for companies who could support this particular contract and tell them about this opportunity. 
because since it's not public notice, like it's not in newspapers and stuff like like when I say public, like not widely pushed in newspapers, then people who support this types of projects, they don't know necessarily right now that this exists. So I would go out and, and look at, OK, who supports these types of contracts and then talk to them about how you can partner with Archer Weston. Same thing. Let's go to another example. OK, here. On this particular example, six construction firms were awarded a $90 million contract. Now, someone in my group mentioned that there's a couple of them that are really good to work for. But here are opportunities where they're going to need everything. Carpenters, painters, plumbers. They're going to need all of this stuff. And it's a great way for you to say, okay, look, I was on Eric's blog. I saw this on here. How do I take advantage of this? Okay, I'm going to go out and find a painting company who needs work. Or I'm going to find a concrete company or whatever the case may be, someone who I have access to. And then I'm going to basically reach out to one of these companies and say, hey, do you need another painter? Do you need another plumber? Do you need another AC guy? Do you need another whatever the case may be? And I'm going to then speak to that company and say, all right, I can get you an opportunity with one of these firms on this $90 million project. And that's what I would do with no company and no actual contracts. Let me just go through real quick. I want to show you something. Since we're already on my page, like I'll show you guys. So this is my podcast. We're on Apple. People say they just because you guys don't always know. They're like, well, we didn't know you had a podcast. We didn't know about the podcast. All right. Here's a podcast. Here's some of our guests on a podcast. Wesley, the 16-year-old military contractor. Ramsey Smith, helping engineers, technology. Bobby Brown, Brocco Oil. Renette Myers, she's on here. Look, Eli Smith, U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce, Alaska Native Corporations. So we have this a podcast that we produce that, again, if people want information, they want to learn, it's all out here. Look, all the information is here. Here, I started my company in 2012, never got off the ground to 2019. I did a bit of chronic, but through the podcast and YouTube videos, I've single-handedly educated me on government contracts, getting my SDLV, helped me understand, pursue 8A until my, I'm not ready, completely benefit from the program much more. If you're new to business, want to get started, okay, trust me, just listen. Like, I mean, we have a lot of spare time on our hands, and I've got a ton of resources out there. Take advantage of the resources that, that okay. Yeah, take advantage of the resources out there, definitely. Um, definitely, you know, we've got a ton of stuff. Look, a t- like a ton of stuff. Uh, Colin, yes, I know. We the book we actually finished. So on the speaking of the new book, Upcon Launch, I just got back. The Siri keeps trying to talk to me while I'm talking to you guys. So I just got back the actual edited draft of the book and that's what I was sending you guys to review so all right is it the same process statewide or does each state have different rules each state has different rules okay Colin send me an email with your new email address so we can make sure I can plug you in because um, your email bounced back this morning send it to Maria how do I know what type of equipment they need? Um, you're speaking about, I'm assuming you're speaking about this contract we talked about. Well, on any construction project, right, they have di- different divisions. And for that kind of money, they need everything. So if you know if you know anyone in construction, anyone in construction, and they're in North Carolina, or you're in North Carolina, um, and you can help that company, Right, get on that opportunity. They're gonna pay you some money because you, if you say, "Hey, look, let me help you match you up," you don't have to worry about it. You keep running your business. I'm gonna make the phone calls and reach out to these firms and see how we get on their vendors list. How do we get pre qualified? I'll do all of that. And when we get on there, you pay me a percent of whatever it is. We work it out. They need everything. Anyone you know in construction, they need that service. They need cleaning people. They need dumpsters. They need rental equipment. They need uh, MEP, which is mechanical, electrical, plumbing, painting, roofing, siding, carpentry, everything. They need floors. They need drywall. They need studs. They need light bulbs, fixtures. They need everything. 
So really, the blog is GoFindGiants.com forward slash blog. As a consultant, how would how would it how would it could you partner as a non-registered SAM company with a registered company? Um, it doesn't really matter because a lot of times, unless you're okay, this is something that that's a, that's a very good question, Diana White. I appreciate it. One of the misconceptions that I had recently, I just posted on Twitter, is that not everyone has to be in SAM. Unless you plan on bidding as a prime contractor, you don't have to be in SAM. If you're a consultant, you don't need to be in SAM. If you're a sub, you don't have to be in SAM. Not everyone has to be in SAM. It's not... When I worked as a subcontractor, okay, no one ever asked me, was I in SAM? That was never a question, was I registered in SAM? It never came up because it was irrelevant. They just want to know, could I do the work? So that's, I think, a lot a big misconception is that people tell you go to SAM and get registered, which again, that if you want to be a prime. So if you want the contract from the government, then yes, you got to get registered in SAM. But if you are just working as a sub for one of these companies, it's irrelevant if you if you're in SAM or not. That doesn't that doesn't make a difference. Oh, you're welcome. So yeah, definitely. Um, I want to share that because a lot of people don't are not aware of the resources that are available to them, and a lot of them are being taken advantage of by Brian taught me a new word: these charlatans out there. So I don't want I don't want you to be out here getting taken advantage of by people on wherever you find them on social media, giving you a lot of misleading information, trying to get you to. Uh, buy into some list that they claim is going to put you into contracts or, you know, put you on the, you're the top company in your country, you know, on this list. You pay me a hundred bucks. I'll put you on this list. It's going to go in front of all the buyers. That stuff doesn't work. That stuff does not exist. Like that's, that's not real. There, there is, if imagine this, I want everyone to think if you could buy your way into government contracts, Right. Just I I like to challenge people. If you can if it was only money and you could buy your way into government contracts, then the rich people would only have contracts. It wouldn't be a program that's available for any of us because we don't have enough money to buy our ways in. Why would the rich people ever let us in? It doesn't. That's not that's just not the way that it works. So you have to stop and think to yourself, if if it's only if I got if I pay five thousand or seven thousand dollars, I'm going to get in. The, the people with all the money would have bought all of that out and would not, we wouldn't have a chance. We wouldn't have a shot in hell. It's no different than trying to start a hedge fund or equity fund. We can't start hedge funds because we don't have hedge fund money or private equity money. So there's no buy my way in, you know, into this program. It just, it doesn't exist. Um, and so the thing is, it takes work. It takes, it just takes sheer work. It takes perseverance. It takes believing in yourself. It takes courage. Uh, it takes being a leader and, uh, hold on. We've got a video request coming up. Hold on. Let me, let me take my video request. Let me see what we have here. Oh, they decline now. Okay. That's fine. My job hit the ground as a sub, not in Sam. Would you still count towards the ESRS? What is, what do you consider? E- what is ESRS? I don't know what ESRS is. Uh, any specific tips for getting trucking contracts or initial steps you should take to getting started? Uh, so when it comes to trucking, the first thing is you have to have your own truck, right? So you can't be like a broker. You have to actually have trucks. The The big companies are the brokers, right? When, you, when it comes to the federal arena. So you have to have your own trucks. And um, speaking of that, I made the post, and that's probably how you heard about me through that post recently where the company won the large trucking contract. Where is it at? Hold on. Crowley. So you're probably referencing the, the Crowley post. I can tell you this, um, Chels, is that one of my students has been talking to Crowley, and they said they're looking for truckers. So they... They sent me an email. I have the emails for some of the people there. But really, if you have trucks and I posted that these companies just want a $300 million contract, you should be emailing them 
to actually, you should email them to find out how do you get on their bidders list, right? How do you become a vendor with these companies? Uh, that's the first thing that, that I would do. Uh, the other thing that I would do is, again, this is one resource that I posted, but where are there, the, the GSA has a nationwide contracts for trucking. Find out who are the vendors that are on that GSA list and reach out to them and become a vendor on some of those uh, those actual contractor companies. Become a vendor for them to provide trucks. I know for the one that we're talking about, by the way, let me just, in case for those people who may not know what I'm referencing, we're referencing this particular contract here on our blog. And so this is the one that you're probably talking about where they won a $328 million that went modification. They were awarded that modification. So now it took them up to $700 million and they're doing freight transportation. How many people out here who liked that post, who shared that post, who tagged that post actually reached out to them? How many people reached out to them? Well, one of our students in GovCon did reach out to them and they said they have work available. So that's how you get in there. You reach out, I, I post something, if I share something, you should be reaching out to these people for, and I talk about this in some of my videos. First of all, I will say congratulate them and ask them if they're looking for truckers. And I guarantee you, because they just increased this award to four, $300 million, they need more people. They need trucks, they need, but I will say this, one thing that I did learn was that they, uh, they did sometimes have a minimum requirement. So I think before it was like three trucks. So they weren't taking like people who had one, just one truck. You had to have like three or more trucks in order to work with them. My man Drank says he just found a great way to get data on sam.gov, an easier way, good stuff. Okay, well, you know, listen, reach out to Crowley. Uh, we, again, we just, it was Tuesday where one of the students said he had reached out to them. He has like three different email addresses for three different people. Um, the only thing I could say that I know someone else reached out to them said that if you were, if, if part of their agreement with the, the freight was if you were gonna want it to drive the government loads, you also had to take some of the commercial loads. And I know the government loads paid a lot better and so some people only wanted the government loads. They didn't want the commercial loads. So that was, that was one of the, like, the other caveats. But again, I'm not in that business. I'm not in that industry. All I'm doing is giving people the information, the tools, so that you can do your magic, right? Like, hey, Eric, by the way, thank you for letting me know about this so I know who to reach out to. I'm doing your homework for you. I gave you a layup, grabbed the thing, and slam dunk. You can email Maria anything. Maria has her email in there. You can always email Maria for any questions that you have. Um, yeah, basically a fleet. But they said three or more. I don't know if you consider three or more trucks a fleet. So. But that's, that's what I would say. What else? What else? What are you, everyone's shy? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Colin was Colin. I know you pre-ordered the book. You were actually the first one to pre-order it, and that's why when I got the first edition of it, yeah, no owner operate makes sense, right? Like, because again, they're the ones that are taking on the liability and responsibility. So, um, you know, that's that 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 kind of is. They don't need someone else doing their job, but. Again, it's a great it's a it's an opportunity. Like people are saying, there's no opportunities. There's opportunities. I I read an article where someone complaining about having trucks and not having work, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me when I'm looking at companies that need people to do this stuff. And that and 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 while we're waiting for the next question to come up, that's something that really the reason why I even start this journey, and the reason why like no one's going to beat me at this is because in 2007 and 2008 when the recession hit then i was a part of that and so for me once it only took you know i had something happen to me tragically in my life my nephew which we we're the same age by like two months we we're like brothers 
he committed suicide when he was 24 years old. And so in 2007, 2008, when again, someone that I knew that was really close to their best friend committed suicide, and it was all because of the recession, it really struck a chord with me. So if you if you look at like the Morgan and Morgan commercials where his brother was paralyzed by a truck driver and he built up this big law firm, that's kind of like what happened to me in government contracting. So it was like, wait, because this incident happened where this person took his life, who I, I looked up to, I admire, I respect it, it's given me such passion to, to do what I do and to continually push the envelope and also to continue to spread the information, to give people the resources, to give people the tools, to connect people. Uh, like I said, look, we've got three Facebook groups. Three, not one Facebook group. We have three Facebook groups. We have Contract Freshman, GovCon Giants, and we have an IT and Telecom Facebook group. And because of the interest in trucking, we might just start up a freight logistics management Facebook group as well, just to focus on that industry. So we've got industry-specific Facebook groups. On top of, we have, we have an instructional designer redesigning our courses, our content, like we're putting everything into it. Um, someone asked a question, how can how many contracts go unfulfilled and how can someone find out about them? Yeah, I know, everyone wants trucking. <laughs> um, so Pierce says, how many contracts go unfulfilled and how can someone find out about them? Now, you gotta explain that one, Pierce, a little bit more. What do you mean in terms of contracts going unfulfilled? I don't understand the question. She said, break it down. By the way, everyone, listen, this is your time. This is, this is me giving back to you, helping you. If, you. if someone has sent you something, ask you to fill out a form, ask you to pay for a service, ask you to join a group, ask to put you on a list, they solicit you for your SAM registration or to renew your SAM, or you pay two thousand dollars for a capability statement, a website, or you know, like, and you feel like something, something's not right. Eric, does it seem in line? Ask, ask away. Trust me, I have better stuff to do. Right? I mean, I, I have stuff that I need to do for myself that uh, that I could be working on. If no one sees any benefit in this, I always tell people that, like, you know, I, I. Oh, uh, okay. So Pierce brought up something really, really interesting here, which is how many contracts don't receive a bid? The last time I checked, it was, um, it was right around 50, like 57% of all contracts had one or no bidders on it. So it was somewhere around 57% of all the contracts. So when you're looking at all of these things and you think like so many people are bidding opportunities, bidding contracts. Um, it's that's not the case, right? Just because there's a lot of opportunities doesn't mean people are actually responding to them. My very first contract that I was awarded uh, with the help of the Department of Interior was a opportunity that I reached out to a small business person, the Ostabu, and. I gave him my capability statement, always be prepared. That's the first thing, always be prepared. Uh, I reached out to an Austin booth, gave him my capability statement, and she says, hey, I have a project right now on, it was FedBizOps at the time. She says on FedBizOps, and this was like two years ago. And again, my, like my first call, and she said, I have a project on FedBizOps, and I put it out twice, no one's bid it. Would you look at it? And I'm like, sure, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at it. She's like, Not, like now. So, all right, she sent me the information. We're on the phone. And I looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, it looks good. She goes, well, can you give us a price? I'm like, absolutely. They extended the date, the bid due date, so that I would price the job. And what do you think happened? I was the only person that bid it. But imagine how do you, like, it's almost impossible to have that kind of information available unless you are calling and speaking to people in the offices letting them know who you are and what you do, they can't give you those opportunities. We've had someone else in our group that shared a story two weeks ago that had the very same experience this year, reached out to an Ostabu. There was a source of SOT that was posted. Um, only one company responded to the source of SOT. And so he was a consultant representing a client. 
he actually, in turn, um, the officer who told him who it was that responded, the person then, he reached out to the person who responded to ask if they want to do a teaming arrangement together. They said yes. And now he has a teaming arrangement with the only company that responded to try and sole source the contract. And it was just a matter of reaching out to the people and being prepared. A lot of times we're sitting back behind a computer, we're scrolling on our phones, we're on our devices. We don't pick up the phone, we don't call, we don't email. We're not reaching out to anybody. So, I, I mean, I don't know how people expect to get results without even making efforts. That's one of the things that I posted that's on my IG stream today, which is like, look, a lot of times we're already saying that this thing doesn't work. We haven't even tried. Like, you have all the resources available to you right now. Um, if you have a trucks, right? So, so let's go back to Chels. If you already have trucks, right, and, and you do, you have, you have this business. You're already you're an exceptional person to me. You're not like just some regular Joe Smo. Like you're an exceptional person. You're in business. You've made a financial commitment. So what does it take for you just to pick up the phone and call or email some of these companies and ask for opportunities to work with them? You've already done to me. You've done a lot of the heavy lifting and the hard part. This is just one more step. So for so you know I say that about about most of the people who are here that are watching. A lot of us have already done a lot of the, what I would say, difficult activities, which is starting. Starting is, is it's so hard for a lot of people just to start. So you've started, you've taken action, you've taken steps, but you just didn't close the loop. And um, that's kind of where I see a lot of people falling short is not closing the loop. And that's why I posted again, 90% of people are not defeated, they just quit. So like, I really do admire and respect everyone out here who's making the effort, who's making the attempts, who's, who, but I want to encourage you to try and close the loop, right? Not to be, and again, I always say this, what, what would you do if fear didn't exist? What would you do, um, right? If, if you had unlimited money, unlimited resources, what would you do, right? Do that. Pretend like you have the resource, pretend like you have all the things that you need, do that. Because what happens is, and we talk about like what happened with, with you know Maria and I and Pierce and Randy with the PPE stuff. Um, is that we went out there and we literally won eighteen million dollars in PPE contracts, and we didn't have the money to do it, but as a result of us winning those contracts, we then were able to raise the money through a joint venture partner a month later. So. To me, the end game was accomplished because we ended up raising $10 million with a partner. But that's because we tried, right? If I had sat back and said, you know what? Man, we're not gonna try to get this stuff because we ain't got no money. Why would we even try? Like, no, we tried. We made a valid effort. And I spent a month, uh, like a month, literally on the phone call with the, some of the top investors in the country. And I never would have had that opportunity if I didn't have those contracts. And so those $18 million in contracts, and really all it was was a piece of paper. Cause that's, what is a contract? It's a piece of paper, right? It's not like gold or silver or something tangible. It's just a piece of paper. So that, those contracts, that piece of paper got me in a room with Wall Street guys, hedge fund guys, venture capitalist people, uh, the top purchase order financing guys, so we literally, because of that, um, was able to do a joint venture, raise $10 million. And now my joint venture partner just raised $70 million. And so again, all because we tried, like we made an effort. So yeah, we weren't able to fulfill those contracts. We weren't able to actually deliver on them. But at the end of the day, how many of us out there would love to have a partner um, and would love to raise millions of dollars for their business. Like I just, who would not want to do that? And by the way, we did all this stuff and didn't even make the news because we're not doing stuff for, to be recognized like by the news or by the media. We're doing it because this is what we do every day. Um, we have people in our group that are talking with companies that do $600 million. It's not, we're not, it's not on the news. 
right? I have a I have a meeting tomorrow to discuss a point potential joint venture with a hundred million dollar company. We're trying, like we are trying. Can you say the same for yourself, right? Can you say the same for yourself? Are you trying? Are you making an effort? Let me go back and take some questions and see. Um, how long does it take to get a response after a bitter quote? <clears throat> There's no standard answer on that. Because when you bitter quote things, depending upon if the funding's available or if the funding's not available, that's how it, that's some of the determining factors. Also, depending upon whether or not it's a priority on the government's list. So if it's not high in the priority, you may not get an immediate response. If it's high in the priority, it could be within a week or two. So there's no... There's no standard for you bid today, you get a response in five days. That doesn't happen. Um, so are you on the hook for filling the contract then? I don't understand the question, Charles. Is it necessary to be for a subcontractor to be registered with Sam? Nope. Yeah, it's not. So just to be clear, we contact Austin Boo first and ask for a meeting with the contracting officer. No. Um, you can't you you don't no. You contact the Ostabu and you request a capabilities briefing with the Ostabu. You don't ask for me to con the okay, let's talk about contracting officer, contracting officer representative. How many people out there know that the contracting officer doesn't actually know about the project? Ooh. Contracting officers, contracting officers representatives, they are they have a what's called a warrant that obligates the government to spend money. So they actually write the contracts to obligate them funds. They know nothing about your project other than what's on that piece of paper. They did not write it. It came from someone else who has the more knowledge about the actual job itself. So there's no reason why the, you should type, you're asking the officer to talk to the contracting officer. The contracting officer is only writing the contract. And a lot of times the contracting officer is just signing it. The contracting officer representative is the one who actually is more of the administrative person who handles the actual paperwork. But really what you're doing is you're asking to meet with the Ostabu, right, for potential products that you're looking at and then allow them, with your capability statement, obviously you're ready, uh, and allow them to advocate on your behalf. Um, can you do more videos of consulting? I have, I think I've got six or seven videos in consulting. How much more do you want? I have like two, I have two videos that are over an hour on the consulting on my YouTube channel. Um, no, I didn't give a bit over the phone. I never said that. I never, no, I didn't give it, I've never given no bid over the phone. I, I, I don't understand the question. You were explaining how you gave a bid over the phone, just wondering if it was accepted or you on the hook. No, we don't do bids over the phone. All of our bids are in writing. We don't give bids over the phone. Every bid I give is in writing. Um, yeah, Chelsea, I don't, no, I, I, I don't, there's no, I think, we got confused on something there. Yeah, no, I know, right? My, I'm telling you, my, I looked today, I didn't even realize I had over 330 videos on YouTube. I just, I actually looked today just to like, so, I mean, there's, there's one of the things that actually Pierce taught me today was um, if you go to YouTube and you just type in like the question on my channel, it, like you go, it's probably gonna be there somewhere in the show notes, it's gonna pull up the appropriate video. And that's got, like really cool hack that I didn't know. Um, a lot of times people are calling me, asking me the same questions that we already have the videos on. You just have to Google it. You know how much time, in, in fact, it's so funny because Maria and I um, and Pierce, we're talking about that today. How do we like, okay, so we're looking at, you know, hiring some new people, right? And one of the things we talked about was how do you answer the phone calls and people call in? Well, one thing is that Maria's putting together a list of questions that um, are standard questions that people ask. But really, do you realize that most of the stuff that Maria, people call for, she just references videos that we already have. I've had people literally call me and they're 
paying a clarity call and it was like at the time i was charging seven dollars a minute and they would spend a couple hundred dollars with me and all i would do was reference videos that i've already had like the content's already there i, I don't know and it's to me the video that i have on here is better than hearing it from me because on the video i've already explained all this stuff so like literally on the video itself i go through I show an example, I pull up the computer screen, and I'm talking through it while navigating through the computer screen. Um, so Marissa said, I'm not smart, I just repeat what Eric says. <laughs> like literally, it, it, the information is already there. You can get probably 75% of your questions answered from a video that's already posted. You just have to search within the video. Uh, and that's just that's just the reality of it. Hi, if I only, if I, if I only currently have work experience through my job and I'm still getting waiting to get registered in SAM, is it worth doing a capability statement since those are the criteria on the statement? If you only have experience through your job, first of all, again, um, SAM is not a requirement unless you want to get direct contracts to the government. So SAM is not a requirement. If you only have experience on your capability statement, then, no, I agree with you. You can't put your experience from your job. However, and again, let's go back to YouTube video. So, in fact, I'm going to do this. Um, on one of my videos, um, we talk about how one of my guests built up past performance, right, while he was trying to get into the federal arena. And so we actually have that on a video where we're talking about how one of my guests built up his past performance. And it's from Sholetta, Mark Masters. Okay, hold on. I'm going to show you because I want you guys to understand how I say this stuff and it's here. Okay, the person just asked, past performance questionnaire. No federal past performance here, a few ideas to ponder. How does Soleta obtain past performance for landing millions of dollars in contracts? How does that stage before bid requirements goes? How can resellers trust you if you're a brand new company? Part one. How state and local contracts prepare you for the big leagues? So you see, I took the same question that person just asked me, went right to my channel, and I found... Uh, literally seven videos on that. Just, I mean, I did the same question they just asked me. I went right to my channel, typed in past performance, and I found seven videos. I'm my own resource. All right. Um, so let's see. Pierce says, would the Building All Playbook help you with consulting? So the Building All Playbook, what this is for those, it's small. It's not even large. It's like, I don't know. 60 pages. But what, what I did was when I wrote this book, and by the way, we have a second edition coming out that's going to be revised for 2020. It's already in the works. We're just having people review it. Um, what happens, what I did in this book was I took all of the resources that I currently use, websites, things that you don't even know where to start Googling. And I took all of those websites that I use and there's no point in me telling you, right? Like, so I have books from other people that write government contracting books. And they write in the book the stuff from the far in the language. I'm like, why should I reprint the language that's on the website? So what I did was I decided, why not tell you where to go to get the information? So whatever you're looking for and wherever you're at in your stage. Um, so, for example, let me go through some of the I'll just go through the table of contents. So small business program sites, purchase vehicle sites. What does this government buy? Event websites, where to find events, data market research tools, right? So where do you go to find data market and research tools? Forecast websites, how do you find upcoming opportunities? Free resources, learning, places where you go to learn, membership organizations and associations to join, um, social media news, grants, government property, right? And then resources that I use regularly. So like, for example, when I did my capability statements, I used Guru. When I do my thumbnails, I use Upwork, uh, my website, my podcast, all that comes from people that I use that are outsourced from other countries. 
my marketing, Philippines, my podcast, Bulgaria, my, you know, so for 12 bucks, right? Here's a list of probably 85 to 100 resources and sites to go to that you wouldn't even know to Google because like, you, how do you know what you're supposed to be Googling if you don't even know what you're looking for? So to answer the question that was in the chat, that's kind of what it does. Um, Eric, once you've identified a teaming partner, what steps, agreements need to be taken in place before responding to RFI, RFP, what sort of profit sharing is normally done? So, you know, one of the things that you do, and I talked today uh, about this with Dennis, is the first thing is once you identify a teaming partner, the, the first thing I would say is to just, I would do a simple MOU that says, hey, look, or again, we've got teaming agreements. You could probably find a teaming agreement somewhere online. Um, something simple, not complicated, not locking people together for marriage, just saying, hey, like more and more like boyfriend and girlfriend or what your parents would say coding, right? Y'all remember the word coding? My parents would say that. They're just coding. Is that what it courting, coding, something like that? <laughs> Some old school stuff. But nevertheless, uh, you want to just say, hey, look, this is the, we're going to go through some opportunities. We're going to agree to work together. I'm going to do some of the work. You're going to do some of the work. You some, I don't know who's putting up what, what. Maybe they put up the money, you put up the past performance or vice versa. Just saying, okay, you're going to do some things. I'm going to do some things, right? There's no, you can't establish profit share, or profit split, because you don't know what project you're looking at and who's gonna do what. So the thing is, all of that gets worked out, agreed upon when you start talking about an actual project. So what I would just say is that, okay, whatever things, the reason why you chose that partner, who's gonna be responsible for what, right? What are you gonna be responsible for? What they're gonna be responsible for, kind of what those expectations are. And then as, when it, depending upon the project, the size and who does what, that's gonna have to determine what profit gets split. And that's the reason, that's the way I work it out. Remember, there's no, I don't, there's no, to me, you can't lose by making an attempt and an effort. So to sit here and say, like, I can tell you one of our students, the first couple of contracts she received, she was getting 20% of the profit, doing 100% of the work, and the partner was getting like 80% of the profit. Guess who learned in that experience? Yes, the person made the money on these small jobs. So they made 80% and she made 20%. But guess who's still in business today and who's still working, who learned actually how to do the business. So there's no real advantages of someone taking advantage of the other person and you sitting back because you can't figure out a profit split to not start or be stuck there. Uh, I would rather see you say, hey, look, I just want to get in the game and I want to actually do something. And if they have the bulk of everything that you need and you don't have anything, it's like people said, you're making money without putting anything up. Hmm. Interesting concept. And that's the same thing when I talked about my JV partner. He goes, Eric, if the investors are putting up all the money and all we're doing is finding opportunities and matching with opportunities, whatever we make is like infinity because we didn't put up any money. Yeah, we put up our time, but look, you spend your time, wasted your time. We, most of us don't value our time anyways, so you're already spending your time doing things that um, right, that don't pay the bills or don't pay you any money. But eh, that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Chelsea, what do you teach your paid courses? Um, everything, the same thing that I teach online, everything about government contracts, how to start, you know, I mean, uh, uh, all the things that we talk about from building a target market list to uh, I give you examples of making phone calls, who to call, what to say, where to go, how to look, how to crunch the numbers, how to uh, analyze, right? who's buying what you sell. A lot of times, so Chelsea, I'll give you a good example. Someone uh, Monday said, Eric, should I pay for a GSA schedule, right? GSA schedule is gonna cost you, if you hire a third party consultant, I don't know, five to $12,000. Some people charge up to $18,000. You're gonna make a $5,000 purchase, right? Based on the fact that someone told you that the GSA spends all this money. Well. You can buy our program and figure out how to do your own research. And, or you could go on my YouTube channel and figure out how to do your own research to determine even if that's necessary. Why waste your time, energy, and a whole bunch of money throwing it at, and, and not only GSA schedule, at 8A, 
hub zone right so people gladly pay people to help them with certifications registrations that they don't need i've already explained in the very beginning you don't need sam if you're not going to be a prime so you spent people gladly will pay 500 700 thousand dollars to get registered in sam to get a capability statement i've heard people paying two thousand dollars to get a website and a capability statement they don't have any contracts where did you learn how to actually get a contract so all of this stuff that your people are paying to do don't yield contracts <laughs> i'm teaching you how to get contracts so again those things really um, they mean nothing if you don't actually learn how to navigate this market how to determine who's buying what you sell, how to, to, to know who you should be talking to, what you should be saying, to, to make, not, make yourself not sound silly, right? Because you get, what, one first time, you make a first impression, right? So again, how do you make yourself not seem silly? Because if they take your phone call, if you go to a virtual event, or if you go to a conference, you know how many times, Chelsea, this is a really good example. One of the things that I hear most often from students of mine is, Eric, you know, I was at a conference, I was at an event, and the people are so impressed by me. They're like, you don't sound like the rest of the people that come to this event. You know how many times that someone was on, a, on our call two weeks ago and they said, the FAA, I was on a call with the FAA and they were, they start giving me information because they didn't have to tell me what to do. When you come prepared, now they can start actually talking to you about contracts and money. When you come unprepared, which if you don't, if you don't know what you should be saying or asking, you're going to show up unprepared. So you're going to go to an event. You're going to get on a call. You're not going to know what to say, right? And so you're going to show up unprepared. That person's not going to talk to you about opportunities. They're going to talk to you about get registered with SAM, get a capability statement, um, go to GSA, maybe get 8A. Maybe, they're going to tell you all this other stuff that because you don't have your ducks in a row and you sound that way, you, you don't speak confident. You're not speaking intelligently because you don't even know what that is to ask intelligent questions because you're like who's tell who's telling you what you should be saying to these people find me somebody on here and again we're doing our research we've done a really good job i'm paying someone to do the research find someone on here that tells you what you should be saying they don't tell you that the p-tech doesn't tell you that i put out a video two weeks ago on youtube live where i said go to your p-tech and ask them to help you research contract information I have yet to find one person, one, to come back with the information that we need. One. Uh, Colin, Billion Dollar Playbook, Volume 2. We don't have that on pre-order yet. Oh, my man, Demetrius is there. All right, look. By the way, if there's anyone you guys want to hit up to talk about me, GovCon, it's DJ underscore thr33 demetrius is a great resource he's in all the groups he's very active in fact demetrius can i blow you up <laughs> demetrius i'm about to blow you up because you know you got all these freight logistics transportation people out here right you know they be hungry they they hungry for that information they be they don't want to call Cromwell, crowley and get the emails they want you to give them to us no, but yeah, no, we got a free course, GovCon, free GovCon. Matter of fact, let me pull it up. So for all these people out here who don't know, let me just drop some more resources for y'all. Okay, here, here's another resource that we have, freegovconcourse.com. Boom. Free GovCon course. Put your name, email, join, done easy peasy we also have a free we got another facebook group called contract freshman all right so look we're we're i'm i am trying to put the hands and the information on your hands so the people can have it so they can make decisions uh demetrius says i'm trying to respond to some rfis i can't see the attachments is beta sam working for you or is it my crappy <laughs> um i haven't looked in the last couple of days Maria Pierce, you guys having problems with Beta Sam? Oh, you found the video? Good stuff. All right, see? Um, truly blessed. I started my cleaning business a year ago. Can I govern government contract? What? A year? Listen, 
we have, in fact, you know what I like about here? Uh, we have people that are in our community that support us. By the way, thank you, everyone, GovCon Giant students, for being on tonight. I see you out there. Uh, but we do have people that are on the chat that are in cleaning businesses that are turning down work. So you can, so we actually, matter of fact, truly blessed. I had a meet and greet yesterday with some new students that just signed up two days ago and they want to do cleaning. We had a meet and greet with them. And literally we talked about how fast can they get ready? We've had people that went to an event, met someone, and within three days they asked them to have 40 staff members ready to go. So truly blessed, how fast can you get ready? Like how fast you, how, you started a year ago, can you mobilize 20 people, where are you at? Put your, put your city in the chat, put where you're at and how many people you got ready to go. I, there's people out here with contracts that are looking for folks like you. So, I mean, it's just reality. I uh, just got your book on Kindle two two seconds. Yeah, like I mean two seconds, and like I said, we we're working. We have version two coming out twenty twenty, with all the updated links. We've got some updated uh, references, resources, because you know stuff changes every three years. That's the other reason why I wrote a small book with just links on it because you can update it regularly and you know change it. So that's what we did. Um, the other team brings a past performance that's critical. We think, but great advice. No, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to share. Uh, pay course way deeper. Choose your calls. Any updates on your tool you're creating for beta.sam? We're working on it, man. We're working on it. I, um, Maria asks about that all the time. We're working on it. There you go. Commitment lasts longer. Community. I, by the way, Maria, I wrote that up here. It's like right there. Uh, I'm still working on the tool for Beta Sam. We're still working on that. P Tech content was great today. We have a meeting with SBA lead at Defense Arm. He helped me so much. Pull us on their SBA list. We're trying to connect now. It's a lot to work. Follow up. Awesome. That's what I love. I've used your videos and blogs. Reference good stuff. I'm happy to hear it. That's why we put the content out there. We want people to use it. We want people to go to the podcast. By the way, if you're new here, we have a podcast. We have 60-something plus episodes. Actually, we have over 70 episodes, but some of them we don't call episodes, so they're not numbered. But we have the podcast. Go to the podcast. Look, if you're just joining us here, GovCon Giants, we're everywhere. Apple, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, we're everywhere. Go to the podcast. Go to the blog here. Like, there's no excuse. Listen to some of our podcast guests, right? Look, if you need inspiration, listen, look at Wesley, 60-year-old military contractor. Go listen to Wesley. If you are in specific industries, if you're in landscaping, here, we've got it broken down by industries, all right? Listen to Chris, Dombach, IT, construction, right? Students, consultants, attorneys, Alaska Native companies, right? All this stuff is here. Like all this information is here. I don't know, like this, this is, it's free. It's public, it's all public. I, I got all this stuff that's sitting here. 99% um, of everything that I have that I put out there is completely free. Visit me on Twitter. Every day, I'm on Twitter posting. Every single day, I'm on Twitter posting, sharing contracts, sharing opportunities, sharing you what's going on. Look, this is one of my guests recently. Look at this. This was one of my guests on our podcast. This is her robot arm. She owns this thing. Can you imagine this? She's sitting satellites to space. She was, a, I just, her and I just talked on Monday, Carol Craig. This is her robot arm. We're like, we got people building robots, satellites, rocket ships. I mean, I, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know what else what folks want out there, man. You know, we look, whatever you want to do, whatever your business is, we have it. Sorry. Look, they got 16 seconds remaining. Um, did I answer everybody's questions? 